know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Peace, everyone, today. I hope everyone is doing well um, tonight or today, and if, you, if you're in some other part of the world. Um, I'm so, you know, I get so excited. I stay excited. Let me just put, the, let me put that out there. I stay excited when I get to get a chance to get onto Happy Talks and to interview our guests. But, you know, this guy right here, he's been on more than anybody. He's like the resident, like, happy guest. We got to give it, we have to actually think of a different name to describe Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Um, but he, you know, he'll be on in a couple of minutes. But first, you guys know what's, what time it is. It is the last couple of days that you can get your tickets to see the, the screening, Hoppy. Hoppy is screening May 1st. That's this coming um, Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's very important that if you have not gotten your ticket, just get your ticket right now. Let me tell you, even if you've already seen this film, you haven't seen it with this group of people, okay? After you've seen the film at 7 p.m., at 9.30, we have a special talk back that's just for the people who bought screening tickets. And it's cool because we have a lot of the um, happy cast members um, come on afterwards, but you never know who's going to come through. So, and you never know what type of conversation we're going to have. Like in our minds, we think, oh, we want to, you know, um, have this discussion or this discussion, but it always just goes the way that it's supposed to go. And so it's it's just... It's just really a special night and we don't take those. And so we can't send it out to you later. So it's really important that you get your ticket at happyfilm.com. Okay. And um, sit down, put, you know, put it up on the big screen and see these beautiful images of, of us around the world. So it's a very, very um, good film. So you want to, you know, check us out May. That's this Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Now, also, while you're at happyfilm.com, let me tell you, there's a couple of things you can do there. The other thing you can do is that you can actually um, sign up for the newsletter. Now, the newsletter is dope because we have about five different um, things that we always put in every newsletter. So one, we talk about a financial innovator. We then um, give you some financial one-on-one news. And that article is actually, actually written by Appeal uh, federal Credit Union, um, and you can check out a video that we did with them, with the uh, with the director. Maybe I think we did it maybe about two months ago. You can um, check that video out. But we've teamed up with them, and so they're giving us some financial news every month. So we have a financial one on one news um, uh, article. We always highlight a black business or a couple of black businesses. Uh, that's very important to us because that's that speaks to our happy. Uh, movement principle number two, which is to support other black businesses. And um, the uh, the other, um, the other I, I'm losing my train of thought, but the other article that we always put in there is a health article. And we are lucky enough to have Black Silt Yoga. And they were on our show uh, last week when we talked about, uh, you know, business ownership. But you know they're a very powerful couple in um, Atlanta who own a comedic yoga uh, studio, and so they write an article for us every month. And then we all, always put the regular stuff in, what's going on with Hoppy, and then any other type of news that we think that you might um, enjoy. So it's really important that you guys sign up for the newsletter. And with signing up for the newsletter, make sure you open the newsletter. You know, we get to see, like, we have this massive list. But then, you know, after we send out the email, we see that only a small portion of you guys are opening it. It's really important to open it because we not only have deals sometime in there, you get, um, you know, percentages off, play, you know, different places. It's just a really good piece of um, of, um, of, um, of news to have. Um, so please make sure you go to happyfilm.com and sign up for the newsletter. Also, while you're there, you can get you can check out our merchandise, and we got lots of type of um, of, of um, merchandise. One, this one I have on today. 
which is the happy, um, blue, blue happy. And we have, not only can you get, you know, t-shirts, but we also have DVDs. We have the other DVDs, the Tekken, the Nubia. So we have um, a bunch of other things that you can get from happyfilm.com. So, um, and the other, the last thing that we can do when we, um, you know, when, when you come, come on to happyfilm.com is that you can actually donate. So a lot of times when we are out here and uh, Dr. Rashidi will probably talk to this as well, you know, you're out here, you're, you're trying to get this information, get it to your, um, to your people. These things cost money. Okay. And maybe if you can't actually get out there yourself, but you can donate, you don't understand your money stays within our circle of, um, of our cooperative economics you know, our hobby. And so it's very important that if you can give anything um, that you, um, you know, donate to donate to the cause, you can go, you can go to hoppyfilm.com to do that. Or you can just hit, um, hit us on cash app or the super chat cash app is uh happy film. We make everything easy right there. Happy film. Now, if you're low on funds, that's okay. We still got something for you. Like this video, just like the video. You know, we have a, a lot of content we put out. We are on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, and YouTube. And we know that we are getting a lot of views with these videos that we're putting up, but we notice that there ain't that many likes. It's not that many subscribers. Just subscribe to the channel. That is an a instant way for you to show your support, um, you know, with Hoppy. So please, guys, go to happyfilm.com and you can do all those things. I want to give before we give um, before we get started. I want to just give out some little shout outs here. I see um, Michelle Jewell always uh, representing and DM. DM is usually that first cat that's up in the um, chat. And I see pseudo charlatans. Now let me tell you about pseudo charlatans. Pseudo charlatans is everywhere. The, so was the other two people I just mentioned. But every time we sign on to anything, we have a we had a live today with um with Axel on Instagram and pseudo charlatans was right there. So big ups, thank you. Um George Ames, peace. And I also um want to give um a special thanks to our elder. And I'm sorry, we probably have I'm sorry, we have three elders. One is John Henry Staples from Riverview, Florida, and the other two are Dr. Rosalind and Leonard Jeffries. So peace to you three. Thank you. We always feel um, extra happy when we know that you guys are online and supporting us. Um, so, and my new friend, um, uh, Ra uh, Rashamela Combo. You know, you guys have to get at this sister. She's a she's all right. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to bring to you Dr. Renoko Ren Rashidi, my friend. Yay. How you doing, Dr. Rashidi? Hey, sister. I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. You know, I got to get the African um, pictures behind me. It, it's like I have them, but... Oh, no. Let me tell you who they are. I'm in a very yeah. <clears throat> relaxed mood tonight, and I can see you are, too, so we can be very informal. Three of those are paparai from a special shop outside of Cairo. It's actually in Giza. You know, oh, when wow. you bring groups there... <clears throat> you get perks. And one of the perks I get is, you know, they won't let me pay for papyrus or papyri. So I have a whole collection of them. And those are three of them. And these are on this rich brown paper. And then in the center is my favorite monarch of all time. His name is Namare Amenhotep the third. He reigned in the 12th dynasty about 3,800 years ago. Bad brother, very African, very African looking. And that's a one of my favorite pieces of his, um, this is in the Knight Carlsberg Liptotech Museum in Copenhagen, Denmark. So that's what those are. Oh, okay. nice. Yeah, yeah, those are, God, they look beautiful and they're fresh. You know, for you, I would do anything. Just ask me what you want and you got it. <laughs> <laughs> there and it you is. Know, I wonder, I had to really, I really took note of that. Am I really, I think there are people who come on Happy Talks more than I do. I no, no, Come no, on, you gotta be kidding. No, no, because you know what? At what? first, okay, at first we thought it uh, was maybe like maybe my interviews are just the most memorable, and that's why they stand out. No, it's like it's between you and um Professor Um Small, and then the James next Small. I knew, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. No, but see, you supersede him. <laughs> yeah, you supersede him. And so the next person would probably be Professor Small, and yeah. then maybe Ifudishi. But All you right. 
my part. No. So you know, we gotta think about, you know, maybe we should really ask the um people in the chat <laughs> come up with some type of name. I'm afraid. Yeah. Better not ask them. <laughs> you know, like, I feel like we have to create your uh, like an own little intro for you, yeah. you know. Yeah, we're just so happy. I think about you know, a lot of times people ask us, you know, like, oh, what do you know? How did you feel when, you know, when you got this person, or, you know, whatever person? And Taki and I are literally just like, we're so happy y'all said yes. <laughs> and we're so oh, happy. Well, so, I'm delighted. And I know I speak for all the guests who come in. It's a big deal. Yeah, you know, it's, it's oh, an yeah. honor. And I <clears throat> plan very soon to come on and have a role reversal. I want to interview Brother Taki. And not only do I want to interview him, I want to do a two-part interview. One, I, he may be hearing some of this for the first time. <laughs> I didn't realize the extent of his knowledge on Nubia. Oh. He called me about a week ago, and we, I, I couldn't get off the phone. I had no idea. And then I know he's also done some serious work on the pyramids. So I would like to interview him, a two-part program, one on the history of Nubia and the other, the pyramids of the Happy Valley. That's what i like to do. Yeah, you know what? Well, that'll be great. I can't wait for you to do that because, you know, a lot of times I think, um, and I, you know, sometimes when I'm talking about Taki, I think they just, I don't know what they think about him, but but like when I first met him and I would ask him questions, I'm like, damn, he's like an encyclopedia. But literally when I sit and talk to him, it's like when I sit down and talk to you, I'm like, do you guys have all the knowledge? But you don't, and you no, don't have don't. the best to having all the knowledge, but it's like you have a good knowledge base of a lot of, of things? Well, I would say a couple of things. First of all, I think all of the scholars, I'm just assuming, I know I feel this way and I'm sure the rest of them do too. All of the scholars that you interview, they consider themselves also students and learning is, is an elixir. My belief is the moment you stop learning is the moment you start to die. So I ain't gonna never die. I'm gonna live for all <laughs> eternity because I love to learn. And yeah. number two, I'm not sure, I could be wrong, but I'm not sure if you all, the two of you, the dynamic duo and whoever else is behind the scenes, realize the impact that you're having. Yeah, the impact that you're having because I could talk about you all night, I could talk about Taiki all night. And I think that we need to sing your praises. You know, when I die, I'm sure I'm gonna be one of the greatest scholars that ever lived. But now I got to plead with people to buy my books and stuff. You see what I'm saying? So I yeah. think that as African people, sometimes maybe it's human nature to take people for granted. And Happy Talks is just, hey, it's incredible. So every time I come on, it's a big deal. I'm excited. And I say to myself, what can I tell them to get me on next month? <laughs> I know, you know what, this is, this is why you don't understand why you're so, you're like super cool. So you, you will, you, first of all, you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing. We're like, okay, great. We don't even have to think. I'm seeing because you are so much the hoppy movement, right? Yeah. You are, you bring the hoppy movement with you. So and I bought my, I bought my ticket for the happy talk, hoppy talk screening this Saturday. Uh -huh. So I got a program Friday night and Saturday morning, but Saturday night, it's happy talk. And I'm telling you and I'm telling Taiki and everyone, I'm going to crash that party. I'm going to crash that panel at 930. So be ready. Oh, my God. That's going to be awesome. Oh, my what God. What you're doing is fantastic. So yeah. that's what it's about. You know, and that's why I was going to get ready to say, yo, like, we're, like this weekend, if you guys, listen, it, listen, COVID's still happening. We still sit up in the house. And this is going to be a wonderful time. You get on, you get your ticket for Dr. Rashidi's end of the month webinar okay mm -hmm. which is friday night and then saturday morning then you rest a little bit get a little something to eat chill you know chill out and then you come to our screening at 7 p.m and then you get another talk back like yo you're gonna be straight you're gonna be yeah, we're gonna have a full weekend yeah. and i see <clears throat> that you did something with the uh advent people appeal yes about the credit union yeah, so we they write and they actually write an article for our newsletter um, every oh. month, our financial one on one news. But we we um, we interviewed Kalechi and he came on and talked to us about it. Another yeah. powerful brother. Yeah, you're on the board, aren't you? Are you on the board for Appeal? Or are you connected to them in some type of way? Well, I work with them. I didn't know I was on the board. If I am, then that's a great thing because it's a small world. There's not many of us out out here, comparatively speaking. And we need each other. We all we got. 
we, we yes, we need each other. We really do. Yes. Yeah. Let me let me talk about what I'm gonna do this weekend. Let me show some pictures and <clears throat> we can just kind of kick it around. Let's see what I can come up with on StreamYard here. All right. So far, so good. <laughs> Do you know when you, when you first came here? Like we, we didn't even know how to operate the share screen when you first Oh, came. don't and start getting cocky now. I'm just learning myself. Every time I think I got it together, I make a mistake. Let's see. Did you, now you're just grilling the share screen easy. Yes. And I see um, uh, Sharon got her tickets for this. Oh, book. I see. Uh, yeah. Nice. Good. There we All go. right. Let me show some photographs, and then we can talk about the screening at the end, because I want to talk about it some more and hype it up. Uh, this weekend, from my webinar, I'm going to do a two-part presentation on the African presence in early Europe. And I touch on this from time to time, but this time I'm going to give it a renewed focus. I'm going to talk <clears throat> Friday night, particularly about the first Europeans, but mostly I want to talk about the African image in ancient Greece and Rome. That's going to be nice. Okay. And then on Saturday, I'm going to do the Black Madonnas and the Moors. Okay? Oh. The rise and fall of the Moors. This is one of the most important references uh, that I use for my studies on Africans in the Greco Roman world. This is an interesting piece, and I'm not quite sure what to make of it. There's a very expensive set of art books. When I say expensive, about $100 each, and there's about eight of them. And it's called The Image of the Black in Western Art. It's not what I would call revolutionary, but it's for references, it's, it's excellent. And the most comprehensive article that I've ever seen on the African image in ancient Greece and Rome is by a man named Frank Snowden, who is an interesting person in his own right. He was a black man, but very, very conservative. And I'll talk about him. You know, every time I do these presentations, I always talk about some of the scholars. Anyway, he has the first article in this book and there's an interesting piece here. Now I've collected about, oh, I don't know, maybe a dozen of these. And these images all come, I think, from ancient Greece, about 450 BC. And they show a, a African, sometimes called an Ethiopian or a Nubian or just a plain African. And sometimes on the other side is the face of a white woman. The gender of the African is never spelled out. And believe me, I've done a lot of research. And I don't know if this is, what is the term, caricature? You know, I don't know if they're making fun or they're paying a tribute to what. Anyway, I wanted to show that. And then this is just, uh, this again will be the focus of the, the Saturday program, mostly the Moors and again, the Black Madonnas. Who are the Moors? Who are they? Why are they important to us? What is their impact in Europe even outside of Spain? For example, I find a lot of images of Moors in Germany, a place where in uh, historic times and relatively modern times, there haven't been a lot of black people. And you even have black saints. So why would you have the prominence of a clear, distinct African in Germany? And then something very similar in Italy, but at least Italy is closer to Africa. Now, this is a vase with the image of a Moor. I think I photographed this in New York City at the Met. I am yeah. And then there have been a number of interesting pieces coming out lately about Africans in antiquity. Now, just last week, there were uh, two articles, a series of them, one on what people look like in Ireland about 9,000 years ago, and the other was what people look like in Spain around the same time. Now you have all these reconstructions and it, it would appear that until just a few thousand years ago, there wasn't any such thing as a white person. That white people are relatively recent in terms of their appearance. And I mean, within the last few thousand years and science, not Renoko, but science seems to confirm that more and more and more. I remember one time, talking to the great Asa Grand Hilliard III, Nana by four. And we were talking about, I think I raised the question about African identity and who was an African. And he said something to the effect, Renoko, a better question might be, who are white people? Mm. And who are Europeans? <laughs> yeah. So we're going to explore that. And then here's another one. One of these, I think this is the 
I could be wrong, but I think this is the reconstruction from Ireland. And then here's another thing that I uh, have to spend some time with, and I don't have a lot of answers. I have a lot of questions, maybe put it, put it this way. I have more questions than I have answers, and I'm real comfortable with that. Now, this is from a museum that I said I was going to go back to because I don't like the pictures that I got from it, but I haven't managed to do it because of the pandemic or one reason or another. And this is a museum in Bologna, Italy. The Italians got a lot of stuff. Of course, some people know about the museums in the Vatican. Vatican City has 13 different museums. And one of them is an Egyptian museum. Yes, there's an Egyptian, small Egyptian museum in Vatican City. And then of course you have a magnificent collection of now Valley Art, Happy Valley Art in Turin, Italy. For a long time, even before the British Museum and the Louvre, it was the museum in Europe if you wanted to see now Valley pieces. Okay. And then you have an excellent uh, archeological museum in Turin, Italy. And I could go on and on, but there's a little known, big museum too, but a lot of people don't know about it. When I went, there was only a handful of people in there in Bologna. And it's in two sections. And in one of the sections, you have these black images from ancient Italy, which are apparently copies of black images from ancient uh, Greece. And in this case, I don't know if the blackness is ethnic, if it means people, or it's symbolic. And if it is symbolic, what was the symbolism of the color black in ancient Greece and Rome? And then I'm going to look at the Etruscan civilization. These are, I'm not going to show a whole lot of pieces. I don't want to give the show away. I just want to kind of get you excited about it. The Etruscan civilization preceded the Romans. And these are some of my favorite pieces from the Etruscans. Look at that right there. Wow. And here's another one. These are about 2,500 years old. Now, this is an interesting one. Wow. And because of this presentation, I find myself boning up on Greek mythology. Last night, I got the film on Amazon Prime. I'm not promoting them. Jason and the Argonauts. This film came out in 1960. And I remember watching it growing up as a kid. Jason is a story of a Greek man who is given an almost impossible task. He's supposed to go to the ends of the earth to a place called Colchis and get the hair, the fleece of a ram that's turned gold. And the idea is, if you, Jason, if you can do all this, you must be a pretty bad brother and we're going to give you your props. So Jason gets these guys called the Argonauts including Hercules, and they go to Colchis, which is a land inhabited by Black people in Greek mythology, and get the Golden Fleece. There is a connection that Hercules has with Africa and Africans. Many people believe, and I am one of them, that the stories of Hercules as a youth is based on that of Heru, of Horus, in Kemet. Heru, the son of Asar and Aset, who is striving to regain his inheritance, and he has all these trials and tribulations. Apparently, that is the basis of the trials of Hercules, perhaps the greatest of the Greek heroes. But here you have <clears throat> a vase in the Etruscan Museum in the Vatican, and it has that black figure that I showed you at the beginning, and Hercules on the other side. Now, what's that about? Yeah, what's that? And then here's another piece. Now, for me, I took this picture in the Vatican the first time I went to the Etruscan Museum there. And the second time I went, it was closed. I think that a lot of people just don't go to this part of the Vatican. And so in spite of the fact that they seem to be making tons of money, they don't have enough staff to keep this part of the museum open. So anyway, here's a photograph. Now, <clears throat> I put on one of my Facebook pages, I raised the question, does this look like a black man to you? And one brother very astutely says, you know, it reminds me of God Bess, who we find in Kemet, and he's absolutely right. So here we're talking about not necessarily an African civilization in Europe, but a civilization profoundly influenced by Africans. And then of course, this is one of my favorites from Greece. When we get reparations, this one I won. I got a claim on this. One. And this is just for you and Brother Taki. Here's the confluence of the Happy River. I don't know if I've ever shown this on your show before, but this is where just north of Khartoum, 
where the Blue Nile meets the White Nile. Oh. And it flows through the north of Sudan and all the way through Egypt. It's a nice piece and it's very serene there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's nice. And then just to end, because again, I'm not going to show a lot of pieces. I just want to. Wait, wait. What? This, this, is, this is a this piece. Is a piece. This is like, this yeah. not even like a, this is like a little, like this is like a grain of salt. Well, you're going to enjoy the rest of it too. Because some of it, you know, it's, it has little to do with the African presence in early Europe. I just came across them and said, hey, these look pretty good. I wouldn't mind sharing these to a big audience. Now, a lot of times I have so much material, files, photos, you name it. I have a lot of stuff. That quite often when I'm looking for something, I find something that I wasn't looking for mm -hmm. and usually don't find what I was looking for. Now, here's a photograph <clears throat> that I took in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo that I never noticed before. And the picture has to be years old at least. This is the king I was telling you about at the beginning, Nama Red Menon at the third. Here's another photograph of him as a priest. And this is in the Egyptian Museum. Look at that hair. I didn't, okay. This is the first photo I had from, of him from the side. Look at that. Wow. 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 And here's a collage I put together for a brother that's doing some reconstructions. These are all images, various ones of Mentehotep II. A lot of times we see this one, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but the one, the second one in the top row painted black. Oh, oh yeah. We have many of these. So I put together a collage because this brother, his name is Fabian Mosley, is doing reconstructions of these figures. Oh, and wow. this is his reconstruction of, of Mentehotep II. So let's just go back in just for a second here. So this is the reconstruction. And I think it's very good. This king would have lived 4,000 years ago. Wow. And of course, this is just uh, a plug for the program coming up this weekend. All you have to do is go to Eventbrite and type in Renoco, um, or go to Renoco at hotmail.com. We're also gonna have a program next week. We're gonna have a special Mother's Day program uh, called The Great Mother. Here's some of the flyers we're putting together. Black women are history. And we're gonna have a, a special guest or two. I'm gonna try to talk you into to being there, but we want, we'd like to have an elder sister, you're too young, but we're gonna salute you anyway. And it's the great mother black women in our history. And it's not just gonna be from ancient times. We're gonna go all the way from ancient times up to Francis Wilson, okay? Okay, so we're gonna be a stirring tribute to black women the women I love. Yes, ma'am. What were you going to say? Yeah, can you go back one of your flyers? You had one with, with the hands. It was beautiful. It was just, we, could, we saw it quickly. I just want to, oh, that's beautiful. Those hands. We put that together. I don't know where she got that from. You like that? Oh, yes. You can tell a lot about a woman by her hands. Mm. No, like that's nice. Okay, shout out to what Teresa. What does this tell you? What does this tell you? Looking at her hands. She's been through a lot of stuff. Yeah. She's really strong. <laughs> life, life has not been easy. Yeah. Wow. All right. And just, just oh. to show you a little more of my work, just kind of to drift a little bit. <clears throat> These are some photographs I've taken of my some of my trips to um, Spanish America. Here's with a group of school children in Quito, Colombia. You know, I have no doubt that our people, <clears throat> particularly our young, I don't care what anybody else says, that our young people are hungry for knowledge of self. We just got to approach them in the right way because I, I've seen it all over the world. And that's yeah. encouraging to me. That's my hope. And with a sister and a black business owner, you would like her in El Carmen, Peru. And with a brother from um, a community in Costa Chica, Mexico. These are the Spanish speaking Africans you don't see on TV very much. And with this feisty looking elder, too bad we can't get her on the show you know, for next week. She would have a, this sister, I tell you one thing about her. This is in the Chota Valley in Ecuador. You know what stood out most about her? That sister had a mouth like a sailor. She was talking in a language that I, had me blushing, my sister. <laughs> yes. And the last thing she said as she walked away, this is about 15 years ago. Is F. George Bush, and she used all four letters. God knows what she would say about the Donald. So these are just Africans 
in the Spanish speaking countries. The only one I haven't been to in South America is Paraguay, but I've been able to interact with Africans in Chile, in Argentina, in Uruguay, in Colombia, in Bolivia, in Ecuador, in Peru, obviously Brazil, even Suriname and Guyana. And we need to know that even in the Western hemisphere, African-Americans, that term is broader than a lot of us tend to recognize. In Bolivia, mm. and just a few, what do you call these memes? I like this one. I don't know who this is, who's responsible for, whoever did it, good for them. Raise them with knowledge of self. Raise them with knowledge of self, and that's what we're trying to do. And then here's something that I found hard to believe. <laughs> did you know the desire to escape slavery was once classified as a mental illness called drepotomania. I wonder if that's true. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> I've never heard of this. <laughs> that desire to this escape is slavery was considered a form of insanity to want to get up out of there. But that's uh, what you call it, um, an icebreaker, all right? And this is, you know, people send me things from all over the world. There's a, a brother in Angola that sends me pictures every day. And this is from around 1960. Look at those cowrie shells. Look at the hairstyle. And a sister from Somalia sent me this. And this is a message of solidarity, solidarity with George Floyd. This wow. is from Somalia in the Horn of Africa. So I don't want to hear those Africans don't like you. They don't identify with you. They, you know, this, I don't even want to hear that. We're all in this together. Only difference is some got taken away from Africa and some remained in Africa. And we've all been exploited by the same people. And you know, let me tell you, I, I, can, I mean, some of these brothers, I'm looking at you when you're putting these pictures up and I'm like, wait, these cats look like they're from Harlem. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's like, I mean, you, I would be hard pressed to- um, any, other, any other five boroughs. Yeah. George Floyd, long live George Floyd. Yeah. And then <clears throat> I'm gonna finish up. Again, I was looking for something and found some materials either that I had never even noticed before or <clears throat> saw for the first time in a long time, forgot I had. Now, for years, Jackie Van Sertima would send me Christmas cards, greeting cards of her and her husband, Ivan Van Sertima, for years, Aww. from the late 1990s to the, uh, for a long time. And this is a, a greeting card, a very, very nice one that I do not remember seeing. I think this is from 2002. So this is kind of personal. I have a, a birthday card from John Henry Clark. I got a handwritten letter from Stokely Carmichael, Kwame Ture. Oh, These are the things that, you know, I got a postcard that Ivan sent me from his only trip to Egypt. So these are treasures, these are archives and they bring back lots of memories. And then here's something else. I've been looking for the poster, but I ran across this flyer, The African Origin of Civilization. And there were two speakers scheduled to speak. This is October 4th, 1984. And the two at the University of San Francisco, and there were two speakers scheduled to uh, speak, uh, Sheikh Anta Joe and Renoko Rashidi. Can you believe we set up a, a, a conference, a lecture with me and Sheikh Anta Joe and the plane developed mechanical difficulties and he never left Senegal. Oh. Um, think it, check that out. This is wow. I, I looking through files. I found all kinds of, of stuff. What else? I got? Now here's something. I have a whole pile of letters sent to me by brothers in correctional institutes in prisons all over the country. That's it. I have three big visions that I like to see. And I've been talking about it for a long time. And maybe if I talk about it enough, something will happen. One is to feed the hunger and thirst of this army of African, mostly men, who are incarcerated in the United States. I get so many letters, yeah. so many requests for books and information. Here's one from of all places back around, I don't know, had to be 30 years ago, from the Wyoming Correctional Facility, an inmate order form where you ordered an old book of mine. That book cost $7 at the time. The other vision that I have 
is to preserve, and this is very important, and I think about it a lot, preserving the archives of the scholars. You know, what happens when we make our physical transition, where, where are our books, our papers? If I have all these things, imagine what Lynn Jeffries, Ross and Jeffries, James Small must have. Imagine the thing that they've collected over 50, 60 years of struggle, all right? Let me tell you. They, they do the same thing you, that you do. Like you'll find something. I know they do. Yeah, and you're just like, oh my, oh my God! I go over there and they'll like pull out something. Oh, this is something that we did back in you know 1930, or I'm sorry, sorry like 19 you know 50. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, like this is this stuff is just yeah. But you know what? This you bring up a good um a good thing um Dr. Rashid, or a good point is that you know a lot of times people are trying to figure they're sitting at their house right now and they want to you know, they want to do something. Well, this is something that they can do. They can start to think about what you're saying in terms of organizing all of the stuff that our aunts, you know, that our elders have and figure out like where can where can this go? Because we need people. We need people who are dedicated to um, making this happen because we can't all, you know, one person can't do it all. So, yeah. It takes a village. No, yep, yep. Renoco at hotmail.com. But you got to come correct if you're going to email him. <laughs> yeah, definitely come correct. Or you will yeah. regret coming, believe me. And the third thing, and I say it again, is to have our works translated into these other languages. Those sisters and brothers that I showed you in Ecuador, in Peru, in Bolivia, in Colombia, they don't hardly know anything about African history. For the most part, all they know is that they were enslaved. And as a result of that, they have very low self-esteem. I've never really heard, a, perhaps because of the language barrier, a Pan-Africanism extending deep into those parts of the world. So imagine if Ivan Van Sertima's book that came before Columbus was translated into Spanish. Mm. Right. So those are three things. Yeah. Let me finish up. Now here's a letter I found and I'm gonna read it. This is from a brother named Dennis Walker and it's dated November, 5th, 1994. Dear Renoko, I've been following your writings and activities through Dollar Voice. Dollar Voice, the word Dollar is for the Black Untouchables of India, and Dollar Voice is a newspaper. For almost 10 years now, I appreciate you and the Van Sertima's research endeavors to trace the transcontinental scope of African activity and history. I'm writing a book on Black Muslims in the USA. I would appreciate it if you could persuade African-American Muslims to send me back issues of their magazines for my book. Best wishes, Dr. Dennis Walker. My work on the Black Muslims will be opening out intro uh, into a wider study of the full range of Black nationalist groups in the USA. I will therefore be analyzing the work of your group of African-centered authors. Now, who is Dennis Walker? Dennis Walker, oh my goodness. How do I advance this somehow? Let me, uh, let, me, let, me let me share again. I don't know what happened. Let me see if I can go back. It's just gonna take about five more minutes and we're finished. Because somehow I lost that. I don't know how I did it. So, you know, we um, guys, if you have not gotten your tickets for Dr. Rashid, and you know, let me tell you about these tickets with, for Dr. Rashid's um, show. You know, it's better, you could be part of his Patreon page. Let me yeah. tell you, the Patreon page is where it's at. It's, it's nicely priced. I think it's priced too low, but hey, you know, I'm not running stuff over there. But if you join his Patreon page, you get a free ticket to the webinar at the end of the month for free. Like, I mean, it was not for free, but you've already bought it because you're part of his Patreon. But you get stuff like every day. And the, the cool thing, I saw somebody mention this um, in the chat about Dr. Rashidi, is that he puts a lot of stuff on Facebook. Yes, but he also puts more stuff on Patreon. So it's a really, you know, um, good idea to follow him, you know, you on the know page. Yeah. Thank you for that, my sister. I think I only had a couple of photographs left, so it's not really worth pursuing. I can talk about it. Mm -hmm. But Dennis Walker is important to us because he's one of the, he's an ancestor now. He's one of the founding members of the Aboriginal Australian Black Panther Party. So in 1994, I got a letter from a black man in Australia 
a member of the Aboriginal Australian Black Panther Party, asked me for materials that he can incorporate in a book on Black nationalism. I'm trying to show the connections. And we have all of these archives. So I will spend the rest of my life archiving photos and pieces so that future generations will have access to them. And the last photograph I was gonna show is the ticket or an advertisement for the, um, <clears throat> the Happy Talk screening this Saturday night. Yes, I actually bought a ticket. I didn't want anybody to give me one. I wanted to buy a ticket and sit in and listen because it's just a small way of giving back and showing my appreciation for the wonderful work that you all are doing and how much we appreciate it and that I wanna be a part of it. So that's my presentation. We got through it. So, so you know, um, first of all, I'm gonna get you. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you, I, I got some for you next month. You, you just, you bring a grain of salt. Okay, you brought a grain of salt, really, Dr. Rashidi. You know, we, we get into watching these 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 pictures and this is like, I mean, it's, first of all, they're beautiful, but I think I, I, what I most appreciate about you when you bring these pictures is like, like the stories that's behind, like how you found the pictures and that how, you know, a lot of times how you weren't supposed to take the picture, but you took it anyway, you know? And so we really look forward to these. So- What do they say? A picture's worth a thousand words? And yeah. seeing is believing? Imagery is very, very important. And I learned that a long time ago. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Dr. Rashidi's talking about, so listen, we're about to hook up your whole weekend, okay? You you get your ticket to see um, Dr. Um, Renoko's um, end, of the, end of the month webinar, which is Friday night and Saturday morning. So you take a little break, take a little nap, get something to eat. You come back at 7 p.m. and you can watch the happy screening. And after the screening, we have this cool talk back that we don't know who's coming, you know, um, but I will say we have a special um, elder coming to my house that's just to make sure that this elder can get on and that we can um, see and, and hear them um, because the past ones has always got a little drama there. So they're going to be sitting up at my house this weekend. Um, and so it's very important that you get your ticket so you can see who's going to be where and, and what they're going to be saying. We don't know what they're going to say, but it's going to be good. Um, you know, um, I, there was a question that someone asked, uh, and I can't remember who who was it um, who asked it, but they want to know about the African um, presence in the Dominican Republic. Have you photographed that, or been there? Or do I've been to the Dominican Republic one time. I was on my way. I don't know where I was on my way to. It may have been Haiti. So I spent one day in the Dominican Republic. There's a lot of issues there, as you know, mm -hmm. and I've been reluctant to go back because of the um, the relationship that they seem to have with Haiti and that the Haitians seem to be um, discriminated against. So I've only been there one time. I do know there's an African presence and it would appear in recent times that there was an effort, I think under the regime of Trujillo to eradicate that African presence. In some parts of the Western hemispheres, at least some of the Spanish speaking countries, there is a historical process called whitening. And that is a concerted effort to eliminate black people from those countries. There was a concerted effort to do this in Chile, I know, and certainly Argentina. So I'm no expert on uh, the Dominican Republic. It seems to be a rather conservative Republic. I mean, conservative in many ways, very Christian orientation. But in terms of a strong African research effort, no, I haven't done that. Okay. Okay. Um, what about the Golden Fleece? What about it? Someone asked about the Golden Fleece. <laughs> you know, I think as, as boys in my era growing up, you look for role models. Mm -hmm. And so when I was young, growing up in South Central LA, you know, I was really drawn to Greek mythology. And I read about all the Greek heroes, Perseus, who married an African woman named Andromeda, whom the Andromeda galaxy is named after. There was a guy named Theseus, but and there was Achilles and Ajax, now a house cleaner, cleanser. But <clears throat> the greatest of them all was Hercules. And I remember a, a cartoon program, Hercules is here to save the day, that sort of thing. And there was a Hercules comic book and so I was drawn to it. But there's also uh, 
Jason and the Argonauts. Now, again, Jason is the guy who goes to Colchis, which is around the Black Sea to get the Golden Fleece. The, the Golden Fleece was the, uh, the uh, what should we call it? The hair of a, of a ram, a goat. Okay. okay. And okay. somehow it turned gold and it was not only valuable, but it had healing properties. And this was considered, Colchis was considered by the Greeks to be the end of the earth. And in their mythological records, they indicate that these were black people who lived there. In fact, Jason was only able to get the golden fleece through a liaison with a sister, a woman named Medea, not Tyler Perry's Medea, the actual Medea, who was a sorceress. And she fell in love with Jason and she gave her father a drug and drugged all the soldiers so that Jason was able to get away with the fleece. And as soon as Jason, there's a lesson to be learned here. As soon as Jason got away with the fleece, he abandoned Medea. Okay. Mm. Another <clears throat> interesting figure, African woman in Greek mythology, is a sister named Circe. Now, Circe is also a sorceress. And Circe, I have a picture of her on a cup giving poison to another of the Greek heroes, Ulysses or Odysseus. And so you have all of these figures in Greek mythology. Now, some people would say there were black people in Greece that may have been, or that the Greeks themselves were black. I think all of these things just show the influence of Africa, that the Greeks and other civilizations were aware of African people. And they did not look down on those people. They were valued. The cavalry, yeah. commander, one of the leading cavalry commanders of Alexander, is an African named Clytus the Niger. And we know that in Roman history, you have Roman emperors. I mean, uh, African Roman emperors, you have African popes and theologians and African senators and gladiators. And you have the African writer Terence Afar. This brother is the person that gave us two expressions that are still repeated today. One is where there's life, there's hope. And another one says, um, I'm a man. And therefore, nothing human is alien to me. Clearly, quintessentially mm -hmm. African concepts. Yeah. The idea, I'm a man, and therefore nothing human is alien to me, speaks of Ubuntu, this oneness. And the idea where there's life, there's hope, no matter how difficult the night is going to be, the sun's going to rise tomorrow. So if we could just get through the night, that's clearly African. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Not long ago, Brother Taki did an interview, a great interview with Dr. Malefe Santi. It was excellent. And I checked it out. And Malefe talked about Black people who were taken to the Americas. And it wasn't just the physical presence, but what they contributed culturally and in terms of thought. And so you find the same thing in many parts of the ancient world, where the African was not just there physically, but his worldview impregnated in many cases those parts of the world and we don't know that yeah you know you said something about um you you you, re, you refer to um one of the um the the black characters as uh, or you said that they were sorcerers right yeah. and so like where do you think this sorcerer stuff comes from i don't know maybe associating black women with wisdom Mm. But I know of three figures, three female figures in Greek mythology. One is Andromeda, who is the daughter of the king and queen of Ethiopia, and the Andromeda galaxy is named after her. And the other two are sorceresses. There's Medea and there's Circe. Mm. So what's that about? You have another very, very important figure as well, an, a, another brother, and I would love, I, I kind of have images of him, and that is Memnon. Memnon fights alongside the Trojans in the Trojan War, and he is killed by Achilles. And he rises with the dawn. His mother was the dawn. And so in a mist, he rises one morning and joins his mother. And you know that the Colossi of Memnon and Kemet, where you've been to many times, not far from Brother Karak's, Brother Browder's archaeological dig, yeah. is the Colossi of Memnon. So you have all of these connections. And I'm going to try to tie up a lot of these things this weekend. So again, Friday night. African Greece, and ancient Greece and Rome. Saturday morning, the Black Madonnas, these miracle working icons, and the rise and fall of the Moors. Then Saturday night, it's the happy talk screening, happy film screening, happy, happy, happy. And then the following Friday 
is the program, The Great Mother, a tribute to black women in history. So drrenoco.com, go to the website, um, email me at renoco at hotmail.com or just go to Eventbrite and type in Renoco and a lot of good things will come up. Yeah, right there, Dr. Renoco. So, you know, when somebody asked about the, the um, Colchians. Yeah. Um, wait, I was just reading. I was like, that's a, um, uh, you know, I, I hate that when I lose these, um, I need to write down the questions because the comments are coming so fast that sometimes I, I can't. I know, I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, just give me one quick second to find it. Um, While you're looking for the question, let me elaborate a little bit. First of all, Colchis is identified by the Greek historian Herodotus. And he says that in this land on the shores of the Black Sea, near the Caucasus Mountains, that the African king from Kemet, Sinusra III, Sosostris, the Greeks called him, left an African army there. And that over time, Greek historians and scholars commented on African people living in that area. So it wasn't just a myth. But of course, we know a lot about Colchis through Greek mythology. OK. okay. All right. Yeah, I, you know, I found it. It's like, who, who were they? Were they Black? I found it now. <laughs> no doubt about it. OK. God, everybody's Black. Well, it was seen that way. <laughs> yeah. And now that we are writing more of our history ourselves, who knows what is going to be revealed? It's exciting in spite of all the challenges that we face. And believe me, as a black man, I feel oppression every day. Mm. You know, don't think that scholars in, are not, not hey, look, we, we struggle stress-wise. You know, these police shootings of unarmed black men and women, they affect all of us. So in a sense, knowledge of self for me is an anchor. It's a sanctuary. You know, it allows, I think maybe Marimba Ani said it, that history and culture is our immune system. You know, it, it, it's a refuge and it's a sanctuary. And history plays that part. It's the life of a people. I did a program on Saturday morning. You know that now, because of black people being pioneers, you have what's called Dalit History Month in, North, in um, Canada and the United States. The dollars of the Black Untouchables of India. <clears throat> so now they got their month. And so they had a program on Saturday based in Toronto and Ottawa. And they asked me to be one of three keynote speakers. I was the only brother. I was the only African-American who participated in that. And it's just, <clears throat> I don't know, sister. It's exciting to me that we are beginning to be more vocal and verbal. And we have these tools to, to tell our story. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, can you just add on a little bit about your trip um, to India? When's the last time you, you've been back and, and are you planning on going back? No, I'm not. I, my last trip to India was 21 years ago. I went in uh, 1991. I took a group. That was my third and last trip. Now, as long as I was traveling over there by myself, it was OK, even though I would do speeches and and people would, would interview me and I would do all kinds of things. But the last trip I brought a group. And so we drew a lot more attention and we were kept under surveillance. The black untouchables of India, the Dalits are kind of like, if I wanna, how do I compare it? To like what Mississippi might've been for black people in 1950. A lot of the sisters and brothers in India, the Dallas, they live in rural communities and they're terrorized. Women are raped, people are burned, houses are burned down. The Dallas, the Black Untouchables of India, and I say this with clear, clear idea of what I'm saying, are the most oppressed people in the world. The Dalits, the Black Untouchables of India, there are 250 million of them. Oh my God. They are the most oppressed people in the world. The term untouchable or the word Dala means crushed, broken, and oppressed. And these are the people historically known as outcasts and untouchables. And it's thought that their very touch, sometimes their shadows or even the sound of their voices will cause pollution to other people. And the Dalits are more or less, they're, I wouldn't even compare them to slaves. They're the lowest of the low. And it is thought that the reason that they are untouchable is because of sins accumulated in a previous lifetime. 
And a lot of our people, 250 million of our people are in India in that terrible condition. Yeah. Almost unbelievable, isn't it? But I went over there three times and I, I live with them and I saw them. And the government of India made it very clear, Dr. Rashidi, we think it would be good for you to select another travel destination. We don't want you back over here. And if you come back here, it's not going to be a pleasant experience if you come out. And so the, the good thing about that is because when it was made clear that I would not, even if I could get a visa to come back to India, that my life wouldn't be uh, secure. And if it, at, at the least I would be hassled, I started traveling to other places I ordinarily would not have gone. And since then I've been to 125 countries. Mm-hmm. I was gonna make my life the black presence in India. I read Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams as a university student in 1972. And here's a man who talked about an African diaspora before enslavement, including black people went to China, to Australia, to the Olmec world, to Greece and Rome and to India. He said there were, that India had a huge black population. This is 1972. Wow. And so by the late 1970s, I had made that my focus and I started to study. And then in the 1980s, I started actually interacting with these sisters and brothers, dialoguing with them and corresponding with them. And then in the late 1980s, I actually started traveling there. And my goal was to write a book on the black presence in India, comparable in impact to Chancellor Williams' destruction of black civilization, to study them and to study the black presence in India in all its aspects, never done before. And it didn't get that far. So what do I try to do? At least try to tell people, tell the world about what is happening to our sisters and brothers there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, um, you know, we I was on a, a live earlier today where I was we I was with um, Axel from the UK and we were going back and forth because I couldn't remember how many countries you went to. And I was like, no, I think it's I thought it was one hundred and thirty five. But, you know, there's no, 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 yeah, but it's not that many. It's not that much difference between one twenty five and one thirty five. You know, unless you're going to get there, you know, well, that's are opening up. My daughter is 15 years old. My one child. And my goal when she graduates from what they call college, she lives in France, she has Senegalese roots, is to give her a round trip ticket, a, a, a ticket to go around the world. Oh, that's nice. you going to go with her? I don't have to tell you that, no, I'm not going to go with her. Wow. She I just- want her to go with her friends or just have an adventure. My daughter is a bad little sister. And you will hear about Renoko Rashidi's daughter one day. She tough. Oh, that's, oh, that's what's up. I feel sorry for people, not for people who can't afford to travel, because everybody can't do it. People have family, obligation, jobs. I feel sorry for people who don't have the desire to travel because it's such an education. And I believe that what you find out mostly is about yourself. Yes. So you look at yourself in a mirror and sometimes you say, damn, I don't like what I see. And I didn't even notice it until just now to get out of the United States and to look at the world. Oh, man. Can't put a price on that. No. Oh my God. And then to see other, like, see other people look just like you, and see like the interactions that they have with you, or they don't have with you. Like all of that gives you information. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't even imagine um, not traveling at at this point. You know. Yeah. But for those of you, if you guys can't travel to Europe, I, although I did hear that they're opening up stuff right now. Um, you got to check out Dr. Renoko Rashidi's um, webinar at the end of this month. Uh, I mean, w- which is Friday, Friday and Saturday morning. And then our screening that's happening um, at uh, 7 p.m. that evening. Um, oh, I see I see that Teresa Dobson is in the house. Teresa's yeah. a tough sister. Yes. Teresa reminds me of you. Yeah, you in know, many what? Ways. I, I was thinking, I was like, I need to meet, I need to meet um, Teresa. There's like a couple of people who um, kind of work behind the scenes. There's Teresa that works with you. And then there's Series B that works with Infodishi. And I'm like, we all need to go out, you know, because it's like, <laughs> like we need to have a little thing or something, you know, we got to definitely. Uh, um, powerful. I believe that if you get black women on your side, that's 90% of the battle. I love black women. I, I love black women. That's And I'm going to, when I do this presentation, the great mother, 
I'm going to be, hey, I'm going to be like flying on a cloud. I'm going to really throw down that night. But people like yourself, like Sister Teresa, like Dr. Roth and Jeffries, we cannot say enough about our sister, hardworking, brilliant, and beautiful. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's the only thing I didn't even talk about that. So then you open up Mother's Day, like Mother's Day month because now, I mean, Mother's Day, you know how us mothers get. We, you know, we don't, we're not even confined to that little Saturday. You know, it's like now, it's like everything is shutdown.com for the month. <laughs> we're taking a month, but it's nice to start off with your, um, with your event. Like this is, I, I tell you, this is must see TV happening right now. And remember, Saturday night we finish. Tell us about the program and I'll let you get some rest. Yes. Tell us about the screening on Saturday night. Okay, guys. So listen, you're going to go to hoppyfilm.com and let me just get it up here so we can get every get everything straight. Um, right there, hoppyfilm.com. On there, you can get your ticket for, to, um, for Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. After the screening, it's this is the, you know, where Dr. Renoko Rashid said he's going to crash the party. Yeah, I'm going to be there. <laughs> we have a, a, a after um, party, um, uh, you know, it's just a talk back with some cast members. And we don't never, we, we, we you know, like we put our fillers out there and we kind of think sometimes we'll put down a list of, you know, we're going to have these people there, but then sometimes those people can't come. And it's like a whole list of other people. But it's nice because we, we don't really have an agenda in terms of we're going to talk about this, this or that. It's really what just comes up from the, the spirit of that evening. Um, and we don't tape it. We don't tape it so we can't send it out, but it comes free when you buy a ticket for the screening. So you see the screening, you can watch the, um, you know, the talk back for free. Um, also sign up for the newsletter. Um, we're going to um, have some of our elders and, and maybe Dr. Rashidi, I'm going to ask you in front of everybody that way you can't say no, but we're going to have some of our elders start writing a little, um, an article for the newsletter. You know, Dr. Uh, Jeffrey showed me this little pamphlet and I'm flipping through and I'm and I think this was maybe in the in the 80s. But you you had written an article. Um, I want to say uh, Dr. Uh, Clark had an article in there. I was like, what is this little pamphlet? It was so powerful. So this is, you know, you know, we, we want to continue this legacy of, you know, of having some type of way that we can communicate like with our people, you know, so. So you got to write it like a little article. You can tell me what month you want to yeah. read it for, but um, you, you got to write an article. Anytime. I can write it every month or whenever you want. Oh, Sister, okay. I'm going to let you get some rest. I know you've had a hard weekend, and uh, if there are any questions, I'll try to address them. But yeah. it's just been an honor to be on the show, and I look forward to seeing you this weekend. Yes, and I want to thank everybody. Um, yeah, I think we we actually got we got all the all the questions. Um, yeah, let me see. Yep, 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 yep. We got everything. All right. Doc, thank you, Dr. Rashidi. Thank you so much. And guys, one more, let, let me put up his um, information. Um, you can just go to Eventbrite and just put in um, Renoco or visit his, um, visit his website. You got all your books on there. I have the books on there. And also <clears throat> I have a couple tours coming up this summer. Yeah. Now, the first tour, you'll be happy to know, is with Dr. Jeffries and Dr. Small. And we're going to go to Ghana from July 18th. That's going to be historic. Historic. Yeah. And then right after that, I'm taking a group to Kemet. So if you go to the website, you can get information on, on my lectures, my tours, on the Patreon page, how you can make a contribution, the books, DVDs, a bio, all things Renoko Rashidi. DrRenoko.com is the website. Email me at Renoko at Hotmail.com for the tickets for the pro the webinar this weekend. The simplest way to do it is just go to Eventbrite and type in Renoko. Okay. You know, just you know, one quick little question before you roll out. Um, DM, and DM is always, um, he's like usually the first person that signs on between him and Michelle into our chat. But he wants to know, do you need a, do you need an expensive camera for taking pictures? <laughs> you know, I, I take my best pictures with a little cell phone. Ooh. They're easy to carry. You stick in your pocket. You can sneak because a lot of times you're not supposed to be taking pictures. But I appreciate the thought. And by all means, email me and we can talk about it. Maybe I can use it for a special 
project, you can email me at renoco at hotmail.com. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you, um, yeah I'm this this, this, this is very important, and we can close with this. I've saluted you. I've talked about the great work you and my brother are doing. I see James Small. A yeah. lot of us are doing great work. But there's a role for all of us to play. This isn't about one person or that person. All of us have to get involved in this. Everybody is not going to do the same thing, but everybody can do something. Mm. You know, one of the things that troubles me sometimes is people say, Renoko, you're great. We love you. But rarely does anybody say, what can I do? Mm. What do you need? How can I help? We just don't seem to, to think that way. And so we have to do more work. Ivan Van Sertima, who I talked about, used to say, this is a collective crusade. I love a collective that. crusade. It's not a personality contest. You know, we all have to get involved in this. And there's a role for all of us to play. White supremacy will end when we end it. When all of us say, what role do I play? That this is a priority. It's not just something that I do when I have time or have an extra dollar or don't have anything else to do or the game ain't on. Mm. But when African empowerment becomes a priority, yeah. we will rise to the top again. And that's what we're trying to get people to see. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And it has to be anchor in action. It has to be anchored in action, everyone. So please support um, both of us. Um, Dr. Rashidi's um, webinar this weekend and happy screening. That's on Saturday. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Rashidi, for um, for coming on. And so, you know what? Well, I'll see you on Friday because I'm going to get my webinar ticket. I can't wait. And it's, so you have such cool people and you have the, the little youngins that come in. You know, yeah. so yeah, you, you got a cool vibe going over there. So you guys make sure you just um you support, 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 support. All right, thank you, Dr. Rashid. Thank you, my sister. All right. Talk to you soon. All right, peace. Okay, guys, it's been another another day um here on the Happy Talks. I really want to thank you guys um for um you know I love it that you guys are having your own little conversation in this chat, <laughs> which I can really appreciate. Um, thank you guys for um coming through. Uh, make sure, make sure, make sure. And I like it. It's like, I feel like I have a whole bunch of happy team members. I see George, George is in there like, you know, um, sign up for both events. Yes, sign up for both events. We have Dr. Rashidi, you know, Friday night, Saturday morning. Like I said, then you can just go out, take a little walk, you know, get something to eat, just relax for a minute, then come to the screening at 7 p.m. Um, of Hoppy. And this film is it is a beautiful film. And not just because I, I have something to do with it, because this film is not mine. It's not Taki's. It's ours collectively. And so this is why it's so important for, um, for you guys to see this. Uh, Professor Small always says this. He's like, you know, history erases the white man's mystery. And when you see images of us talking about us, you know, and talking about talking about the things that we have created and that we are creating and the trajectory of that. This is like an excellent time, you know, um, to, to, this, is, this is an excellent space to be in. So please make sure you guys support by, um, you know, going to happyfilm.com. I'm going to put it up one more time. And remember, you can sign up for the newsletter. You can donate um, there if you want to or go to our cash app um, and get our merchandise. There we go. I got the blue hoppy on to, um, tonight, but it's very important, um, you know, that you guys just support. And so again, thank you. Um, thank you to, uh, George, to DM, um, oh, 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 Beeman, oh, Beeman. I hope I'm, so, I'm, I'm pronouncing that right. And drastic, you know, I've been seeing, <laughs> I've been seeing this brother's, uh, you know, uh, the name, everywhere we go. And I, I've been trying to say, how do you say it? But then Axel just said, he was like, drastic. I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> so drastic. So um, peace to you, Sharon, Rashamello, um, Michelle, um, Latanya. Oh, um, Jacqueline's in the house. And so I want to thank all you guys. And uh, I, I saw um, John Henry Staples sign on and, um, and Rakim. Yeah, for limp. For, for Lip, I know I'm messing up these names, Rakim, but thank you guys so much. And until next time, I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace and Black Power, power family. Bye-bye.
I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community?